Today from Universal Pictures is Lost City of the Jungle, the first of 13 weekly chapters debuted in theaters April 23rd, 1946. In true cliffhanger style, it ends abruptly at the precise moment of imminent danger. Will the day be miraculously saved just in the nick of time? Find out and watch this Pizza Flicks cliffhanger serial marathon. Until the next time, may the sauce be with you. So, gentlemen, my government requested me to talk to you unofficially while I'm here at the peace conference. Are we to understand from your remarks that your government wishes us to establish an office of our United Peace Foundation in your country? Yes. Provided your sources of income are independent, controlled neither by governments nor by special interests. Tell him, boy. You know about our founder, do you not? Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. Assuredly. Then you know he left his wealth to this organization? Yes. One of the world's largest fortunes. A percentage of our trust funds is now invested in every nation where we have an office. We're interested only in one cause. World peace. One world, if you wish. Yet you have your own secret agents. Why? They're always warmongers. We check on their activities unceasingly. Here's a case in point. Sir Eric Hazarius. <laughs> Warmonger is putting it mildly. War criminal, but try and prove it. Manipulator of fascistic cartels, super salesman of armaments. Rod Stanton, our best agent, is watching Sir Eric now. <laughs> We're being followed again. Rod Stanton, probably. He's a hard man to lose. We've done it before. How about now? Might be a good idea. So some few hours ago, halfway around the world, 
In faraway San Francisco, death came ironically to mysterious Sir Eric Nazarius. Ironically, because this sinister promoter of destruction died only a few miles from where delegates to the World Peace Conference are meeting to outlaw war. What an awful way to die. I heard what the man said. So now he's gone. So now what's going to happen to us? Yeah. Here we are with a schooner on our hands, chartered for Sir Eric. Yeah, we don't know why or where he was going. Go on, not worried. Sir Eric. That's what I like about you, Marlowe. You are a realist. Don't worry about the dead. You can't help the living. Yeah, but the radio just said The radio has just telling everyone exactly that, but Sir Eric and I wants everyone to believe. Sir Eric Azarius is dead. Call me Jeffrey London. And only Jeffrey London. <laughs> Sit down. Ah, uh, who are you? I am Sir Eric's confidential secretary. Oh, yeah, I've heard of you, Melbourne. Mr. Melbourne. Secretaries don't mean nothing to me. I take my orders from Sir Eric. You have been taking orders from me for a long while, and also has Sir Eric. As we must work together now, you may as well know the truth. A secret the world has yet to discover. I am the man back of Sir Eric. Sit down. Talk about surprises. A new boss? Sir Eric isn't dead like we thought. Kelso was in San Francisco. Oh, Kelso, huh? Valuable man, Kelso. Smart, the perfect double two. He sure was. You never could tell which of them was which. <laughs> Neither could the police. Well, that's the way it goes. A defective steering gear, car burning, and poor old Hamlin with him. <laughs> Well, having this tub and a native crew ready instead of Sir Eric's yacht is beginning to add up. I don't get it. I do. We won't be followed this trip. Your guess is perfect, Marlowe. <laughs> I am tired of Sir Eric being under constant surveillance by the FBI, Scotland Yard, the Sûreté. And Rod Stanton. Here yeah, aren't we all. Where were you and Sir Eric hiding? In a villa above the harbor. We have been there for the last three months. Hey, all these precautions make this sound like something really big. Big. Suppose I am on a track of a defense against the atomic bomb. Every nation in the world would want to buy it. Sure, and the one that does get it will be the boss, because it's only safe to use the atomic bomb if nobody can use it against you. Yeah, but how does this schooner tie in? Merely a blind. It will take you and Sir Eric part way. What about you? I'm going ahead. Going where? To Pendrang. Pendrang. I never heard of it. You will. After leaving the schooner, you will fly in over the Himalayas. But what has an out-of-the-way hole like that got to do with atomic bombs? Yeah. I have reason to believe the only mineral that makes defense against the atomic bomb possible is there and nowhere else. Splendid, splendid. And now, have you prepared Zalibar for Jeffrey London? There you are, gentlemen. You are now looking at Jeffrey London Esquire. Pendrang, sir. Landing field for Zalabar. Is there any transportation into town? You'll probably have to wait, Mr. London. Passengers aren't expected this time of the year. <laughs> it's fantastic. Being in the land of eternal summer after coming through the snow and ice of the Himalayas. The next five months, no planes can make the trip in. I can understand why you're so anxious to get started back. We'll have the gas sent out just as soon as we get into town. Well, thank you, sir. That'll give me time to check the engines. Thank you. TS-37, TS-37, Ringo calling, TS-37. Perhaps information comes sooner than we expected, my dear husband. Ringo's calling on the radio. Watch the desk, Lakana. The 
you just come in on that plane? Yes. Anybody else come with you? Oh, no, are you expecting somebody? Yes. Jeffrey London, the man I work for. I had word that he was to arrive on that plane. He did, Professor Grimm. But he just said that no one besides... Sir Eric? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> The fact, Grave, that you didn't recognize me is proof that we have nothing to worry about. Well, someone must be wise to the trick. Our man at Bakwar reported by radio that the pilot who was to fly your plane was found unconscious after the plane took off. Come with me, Marlowe. I picked up the two men according to orders and landed them here at the Zalabar Field. Another man whom they call Jeffrey London is with them. Anything interesting about this man, London? He's backing Dr. Elmore's expedition and is convinced that Dr. Elmore is going to be the one to find the lost city in the Pendrang jungle. Does London look, act, or talk at all like Sir Eric? No, except for one little thing. He seems... Nice timing. On Grib's part and on mine. At least that's making the best of a bad job. There's no doubt I'm not as safe as I thought I was. I'll send Johnson back to help you take care of things. What about the archaeological work? How's it getting along? Very well. Dr. Elmore and his expedition have been in the jungles for some weeks looking for the lost city. Mm. And your work, Greg? My laboratory is all set up. Underground. Has Dr. Elmore any idea what is really going on? Not the slightest. He's all wrapped up in lost cities, ancient symbols. Forgotten civilizations. And now, have you prepared Zalabar for Jeffrey London? Prepared Indra, you mean? She is Zalabar and Pendrang. Indra, Indra. Oh, yes, the lady who rules Pendrang. That's right, from the Light of Asia Casino. Out about it this time, Ed. I've got a system at last that'll beat the rude at me. Uh -huh. When does your next check come? Within the fortnight. They come fast enough that the war's over, don't they? Mm. How much do you owe me? A quid or so, old man. I'll pay you and everybody within an hour after I cash that check and start betting. You'll pay me before you start losing it. You might to say. Jeffrey London's secretary? No one else. I suffer from indigestion, and our drinking water isn't all it might be. Take one. Try it later. You might need it. I can't digest poison. No, thanks. You live longer that way. Tell me, what are you doing here? If you don't mind, I explain to Indra. Not in the least. Go right in. Come in. Welcome to Pendrang and to Zalabar, to the Light of Asia Casino, Mr. Malburn. I thought surely you would call before this. Unfortunately, your secretary has duties. I have been preparing for the arrival of Jeffrey London. Jeffrey London? You should have said Sir Eric Hazarius. And you, Mr. Malburn, are no secretary. You have been the man behind Sir Eric all these years. Neither Mr. London nor I are honored by your mistake. Secretary or secret leader? Sir Eric Hazarius or London? What matter? It matters a great deal to me, and I think also to Mr. London. Oh, but does it really, Mr. Malbert? <laughs> You're a magnificent actor. But flatter me by telling the truth. A beautiful lady should always be flattered. You're right. Thank you, Mr. Malbert. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I inherited this casino, the only one allowed in Pendrang. I have my own police, make my own laws. I also enforce the laws of the people for them, at their request. By so much I rule them, but I am not responsible to them. 
In plain language, I can be punished by the people for breaking their laws and custom. And, and punished by me for breaking a law that I make up after you've broken it. In other words, I can do nothing without your consent. Exactly. And what will this consent cost me? One third of whatever you're looking for, using that archaeological expedition and Jeffrey London as camouflage. And so I repeat, gentlemen, what I said almost a month ago. It was not Sir Eric Cazares, but his devil that was killed when his car went over the cliff and burned. But you have no proof, Rod. That's just a hunch. More than that, Mr. Bowen. Oh, I know you thought you saw Sir Eric light his cigar with his left hand when you know him to be right-handed. Moreover, you have since been unable to find any new evidence to support your theory. That was true until an hour ago. But this telegraphic report from Tal Shem confirms my opinion. It's just been decoded. Arrangements, gentlemen, mean some sort of a plan. Tal Shan and I happen to know that Marlowe and Johnson are secret agents for Sir Eric. And you want us to gamble with you, I suppose, on the chance that you're right? Yes, sir. And send me at once to Pendrang. Anybody Miller would try and fly into Pendrang now gets me. Fools are usually brave. Sometimes they're lucky. This one's named Rod Stanton. Lucky so far. I was told I was to sign for the gas. Is that right? Right, Mr. Stanton. Here. I'd turn back if I was you. Headwinds? Worse in the world. That's why no one can get into Pendrang by air this time of year. You can't get in, period. Just as bad Oberlin. The passes are all frozen solid by now. Thanks, I'll take a chance. Another thing about fools, Miller. They never take advice. That's what Sir Eric figured about this one. I'll radio Zalabar. He's out with Greb, establishing himself here in Zalabar as Jeffrey London. Oh, smart, but what's the matter? Something up? What's up, Marlowe? Well, I read your message for Sir Eric. You two might as well get used to it now as later. Reports for Sir Eric are reports for me. Give it to me. This report from Aga Aga makes me feel better. Mm, good man, Miller and Ward. Yeah, but how come you ever let Stanton get as far as Aga Aga? Geography, Johnson. Geography. Oh, anything that happens in the middle of the Himalayas can't be blamed on us, huh? <laughs> exactly. Lucky so far, no farther.
it's safe for me to show myself now. You get tired and cold back here, so do we. And now that it's night, I don't think you'll return to Aga Aga just to put me off. You're right. Now, look, I haven't got time to be polite. You're here, so you may as well know the truth. I do. The odds are against us getting over the hump. That's why I didn't ask you to take me with you at Bakwa. I knew you wouldn't. It's worse than that. I'm flying this route, the most dangerous in the world, for the first time in my life. I know that, too. None of the pilots would take you. OK, then, for whatever comes. Who are you? Marjorie Elmore. Professor Elmore of the Jeffrey London Archaeological Expedition is my father. I've heard of him. A lot of help you are to him. Meaning, I suppose, that he may have to look for a lost daughter instead of a lost city? Meaning just that. You hear what I hear? That engine's going fast. Where are the parachutes? In the rear compartment. They aren't here. Somebody must have wanted more than we do. That's no accident. You've only got one chance now. TS-37, Stanton calling TS-37. And the engines are missing badly. I can't possibly get over those mountains. Just what is your present position, Rod? According to my chart, I'm uh, five miles southeast of Kalmafa Peak. There's a sort of plateau below that peak. Make a forced landing there. I'll get a searching party out. I'll see if I can make it. If the searching party misses you, I'll fly my plane out the first thing in the morning. Wish me luck. I'm trying to make the landing now. We made it. We better go out and see how we're fixed. Across the danger from slides. If we leave the plane, how will a search party find us? We'll head towards Hamafa Peak. I gave that as my bearing. It'll be tough going. Yes, this is Tal Shan. What about the search for Stanton and the girl? Have you started yet? Your message had to be relayed many miles. The mountain men are gathering now for the search.
I stowed away on your plane, Rod. I know I'm a hindrance, but I can't go any farther. I'd be glad you came along, Marjorie, if we weren't in such danger. We'll rest a while. Now it's daylight, either the search party or Tal Shan should spot us. Let us hope Rod Stanton's trip to Zalabar in Pendrang proves Sir Eric dead beyond any possible doubt. Just decoded from our agent in Pendrang, Tal Shan. Received radio report from Stanton. His plane forced down in Himalayas. Have mountain men searching. No word as yet. so fast that it catapulted from the ledge above us. That's all it saved us. Well, I must admit, I didn't think I'd live to talk about it. That's a plane, all right. 
Tao Shan? on that point. Hey, is Sir Eric around, Marlon? Sir Eric Cazarius is supposed to be dead. Here in Pendrang, like every place else. Oh, sure, sure, Marla, but calling him Jeffrey London now after having called him Sir Eric for so long, well, gee, it ain't easy. Where is he? He's out with Melbourne. Well, here's Melbourne now. Too bad Mr. London didn't come back with you. Got a very important radio message here from Aga Aga he'd like to hear. Mr. London, not to me, but does it matter? Read it. Rod Stanton and Marjorie Elmore survived plane crash in Himalayas. Mountain men rescued them. Now en route to Pendrang via Maraba Pass. It's signed by Miller. Oh, Dr. Elmore, the head of our archaeological expedition, has a daughter named Marjorie. The girl is unimportant, but Rod Stanton... He's coming here for one reason. Obviously, the United Peace Foundation has assumed correctly that it was Sir Eric's double who died in the accident. Yeah, but how is their agent Stanton going to prove that Jeffrey London is really Sir Eric Hazarius? You'll never be able to recognize Sir Eric now that he's shaved off his beard. You missed the point, Marlowe. If he uncovers sufficient evidence that Sir Eric is alive, he will continue with his investigation. Yeah, and maybe find out that a secretary like you is really the man behind this. Well, we've got to get rid of Stanton, that's all. Of course, but not before we have found out who is associated with him. But who do we start looking for? That man Ringo was talking to by radio when we let Ringo have it? While him, he must have helped to rescue Stanton. Oh, I see. And you figure that he'll bring Stanton here and we can... Oh, it's going to be easier than that. Stanton will insist on taking the girl to her father at my expedition's headquarters. Mm -hmm. If my calculations are correct, the cavern containing the most important clue to the lost city of the jungle Right, somewhere about there. That's close to the pool of light. Dr. Elmore, I presume? Marjorie, where did you come from? How did you get here? Stowed away on Mr. Stanton's plane. Rescued by Tal Shan when we made a forced landing. Oh, I've been having some real adventures. I'm certainly glad I didn't know about all this until now. I must confess I'm delighted to have you with me again. This is Rod Stanton, my father, Dr. Elmore. How do you do, How Doctor? Do you? And Tal Shan. Step forward and take a bow, Tal. Uh, we've known each other quite a while. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, this is my assistant, Dr. Greb. How do you do? Glad to know you. Pleasure, I assure you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to the excavation.
calling headquarters. Calling headquarters. Station number one, calling headquarters. This is headquarters. Come in, station one. Stanton and Tal Shan are in Dr. Elmore's office. They just got here a few minutes ago, bringing Marjorie Elmore with them. Mr. Lennon, did you hear that? I heard, Johnson. So Tal Shan is the man working with the Stanton, huh? Wait here. I've got an idea. The United Peace Foundation is going to have two less agents. If Sir Eric. Uh, you better start calling him Jeffrey London like the rest of us. All right, Jeffrey London, Dad. If he were half as efficient as I am, nobody would be able to follow him. Well, now you're good, Gaffron. But even you can't control people like you can your test tubes. And uh, why is Mr. London in Pendran? To find a certain mineral for you that we know is here. Yes, the rarest, most important mineral in the world, meteorium, atomic weight 245. The only practical defense against the atomic bomb depends upon it. Huh? Where is it? Oh, you'll get what you want sooner or later. Then you'll be famous, and Mr. Lennon will sell your defense for the atom bomb to some country with so much money that we'll all be rich. Yeah, which will probably start the last great war. But that is no concern of mine. I want the great scientists of the world to bow to Ernst Gaffron. Nothing more. I want to be rich, and you want to be famous. You better start worrying about this Rod Stanton, because if Sir Eric don't stop him, he's liable to stop us. Until just now, Latana, I didn't know that Tao was married. Your surprise, Mr. Stanton, left no doubt of that fact. And a very pleasant surprise, I assure you. Thank you, Rod. Hello, Latana. The traveling Shan? Are you Rod Stanton? Our chief of police, Captain Hammond. Perhaps it's more precise to say the gentleman who enforces Indra's laws for her. Fair enough either way. Well, are you or aren't you? Yes, I'm right, Stanton. And I'm just as curious to meet Indra as she is apparently curious to meet me. Shall we go? <laughs> and so I have to do what I just explained solely because Stanton has ground to suspect Sir Eric's identity. Very well, Mr. Malburn. We are allies. I control the people of Pendrick, the police, this casino. You have a fabulous secret you wish to preserve. By so much, we need each other. But something like this must be done my way. What do you suggest? That depends upon my interview with Rod Stanton. I know Tal Shan. If I send Stanton to you, then use the plan you have just explained. And if you don't send him to me, Return here, and I'll give you my decision. Seven on the black, and then you play the ten on the red. There. That system's infallible. It'll beat the wheel every time. Too bad you can't prove it till your next check comes. That won't be for a long time. And don't ask me for an advance. You're a curiosity, Stan. First man ever to get into Pendrang after winter really got started in the Himalayas. Just lucky, I guess. Doc Harris does the introducing. See you later, Mr. Stan. Mountain water doesn't agree with me. This really fixes it. Anytime you don't like it, let me know. I'll remember that. <clears throat> this way. Drang is honored by your visit, Mr. Stanton, the United Peace Foundation's best agent. If you know that much, Indra, then you know my investigations are unofficial. I have no police powers, national or international. You are careful to obey the laws of the localities in which you operate. I know. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Why have you come here? 
I have reasons to believe that Sir Eric Cazarius is here, and I hope to prove it. Sir Eric Cazarius? But he's dead. That's what he's tried to make the whole world believe. I don't. Well, whom do you suspect? Jeffrey London. Oh, come, Mr. Stanton. My plane was forced down. Yes, I heard. And the removal of the parachutes compelled me to think there was sabotage. It was anticipated that you would not survive to tell about it. Is that it? Well, you have a point there. Here's another reason. A man named Ringo... Ringo was murdered in his plane at our field. We're investigating now. And London must have been near the plane or somewhere near the landing field at the time of the murder. Marlowe and Johnson were with him. You're interested in only one thing, aren't you, Mr. Stanton? World peace. Perhaps Jeffrey London should be investigated after all. Why don't you pay him a visit? With my permission, of course. I hope you have better luck than I've had. What do you mean? I've never met Jeffrey London. Only his secretary, a Mr. Malbrun. The death of that pilot was as much a shock to us as it must have been to you. Dr. Grepp arrived in his car when Mr. London landed and brought Mr. London here at once. Having the word of a reputable witness like you, and Dr. Grepp, means a lot to me. But when do I see Mr. London? As his secretary, I should be able to give you a direct answer, but Mr. London is an unpredictable man. I beg your pardon, Mr. Melbourne, but I'd like to ask Mr. Stanton why it doesn't include Mr. Johnson and me as reputable witnesses. You've always been employed by Sir Eric Casarius. Are you now? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that remarkable how that man's ill repute flourishes even after he's dead? <laughs> Isn't it? As if he still lives and haunts the peace of the world. Mr. London detested Sir Eric. He engaged Mr. Marlon and Mr. Johnson only because they served the warmonger faithfully. Would you like to see their letters of recommendation? No, don't bother. There's an old saying, like master, like servant. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll go to Chief Hammond, as you suggested, about Ringo. Do it by all means. A fine police officer, Hammond. I've already met the chief. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. Indra sending him here means that she agrees with us. You better leave now. giving them to you? No, I told you he wouldn't. I explained that you knew his brother, who needed him badly. That is true, and I shall give them to him. But not before we take from them what belongs to us. Johnson's mission at Pendrang connected with a pool of light. That's a sacred pool on the other side of the lake, close to Dr. Elmore's headquarters. It was just like you figured. Ringo was carrying this. I found it in his cap, so I substituted your message for it. What does it mean? Meteorium 245, Laos, City of the Jungle. I don't know. I wish I did. Our message to Stanton and Tel Shine about the pool of light won't be so mysterious to them. The pool of light? Yes. There is a legend that its waters hide the secret of the lost city. carrying dynamite. They're going to blow up the pool. It will cause great trouble in Pendrang if they do. The pool of light is sacred. We may be able to reach them from the water.
And so, ladies and gentlemen, atomic energy is the greatest force for good or for evil that man has ever developed. And it's up to us to see that it will contribute to world progress through peace instead of world chaos through conflict. What a field day the atomic bomb will provide for warmongers, especially when men like Sir Eric Hazarius have any influence. Yes, Stanton defends peace and decency while Hazarius advocates war to gain power. Speaking of Hazarius, I'll feel a lot easier when Rod reports about him from Pendrang. Jeffrey London, and only Jeffrey London, even when we're alone, Kurtz. Sorry, Mr. London. Greb just relayed Marlowe's report by walkie-talkie. The pool of light is to be destroyed as you ordered. Good. The pool is a shrine. The tribesmen will be up in arms. And we'll blame Stanton and Tal Shan if those two escape the blast. They're going to blow up the pool. It will cause great trouble in Pendrang if they do. The pool of light is sacred. We may be able to reach them from the water. I guess I won't be thirsty for a long time, Rod. In a climate like this, that's not bad, Tal. Perhaps the pool of light was blown up so that somebody could examine its bottom. But I'm inclined to believe it was done for our benefit. By Geoffrey London. This is proof that he is Sir Eric, even if he doesn't look like him. Come on. Where are the others? Well, when the pool let go, it sank the boat, so I told him to beat it. Get that thing going. I want to report to Greb. Marlow reporting. The pool of light has been blown up. And Stanton and Tal Shan with it? They spotted us before we got things set. But I'm pretty sure the flood got him. If it didn't, things are fixed for them in Zalabar. Any reaction from the tribesmen yet? You better get out of the jungle fast. Okay, we're leaving right now. Stanton and Tal Shan. One of the men from the speedboat. He'll never talk again. But maybe this will, though. How about it, Marlow? So we report to Greb at Expedition Headquarters and get back to Mr. Lennon in Zalabar. London. Well, we don't know the tribesmen will tell Greb anyway.
Everything's gonna be all right. Settle down. Well, that's that. I'm certainly glad you can understand the dialect of the Pendrang tribes, Dr. Grimm. They aren't blaming us, I hope, for the destruction of the Pool of Light. On the contrary, they have complete faith in you. That's why they want you to investigate what's happened at once. I'd like to have a look at the Pool of Light now that it's drained. There might be a clue there to the lost city. They don't trust us that far. But the explosion caused an accident in our cavern and... An accident? Was anybody hurt? No, fortunately. Well, that's good news. Let's see what's happened. what the tribesmen wanted us to see? This is it. They say there's a cave and they're afraid to explore it. It's a temple. It evidently connects with a pool of light because it was filled with water. Then the explosion drained it when it opened this entrance. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a look. This should prove to be one of the tablets we've been looking for. How can you be sure, Dad? It bears the hieroglyphic of the glowing goddess. How long will it take to make a translation, Doctor? Well, there's no telling. It's badly eroded. I'll have to use chemicals to bring out the hieroglyphics. Looks as if it had been underwater a long time. Thousands of years, my dear. Do you think it may at last tell us something specific about the glowing goddess? I'm sure of that, Grim. The symbol of the glowing goddess wouldn't be on it otherwise. This will be good news for Mr. London. It's one step in the right direction. I'll send some men back to help you bring the tablet out. Yes, do that. So Tal Shan and Stanton escaped from the tribesmen and got away with our walkie-talkie. Did you follow them? We couldn't, but got back ahead of them and waited near Tal Shan's hotel. They just went in. But the walkie-talkie don't look so glum. It might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> I never expected to hear that. <laughs> hey, Greb is reporting to Kurt something about a lead to a glowing goddess, whatever that is. It's possible that the success of my plan depends upon the glowing goddess. And if the news is what we hope, we've got what we want. We're Stanton and Tal Shan will... Wait here. I want to talk to Mr. London. I don't know anything about any glowing goddesses, but I do know it don't pay to be too curious about Jeffrey London. That's what Stanton and Tal Shan are going to find out. Just as we thought, one of the tubes broken. WXY2614. Have you got any? I think so. I keep an assortment to be on the safe side in an emergency. Too bad we couldn't have used this set all the way back here. With the fixed wavelength, we wouldn't have had any trouble tuning in. Yes, and what we might have heard could have provided us with a direct lead we need to prove that Jeffrey London is Sir Eric Azarius. wait until someone starts broadcasting. They know we have this set, probably, so they may change the wavelength. It won't be too difficult to find. This time, Indra's police chief wants to see both of you. You are coming here so often, Captain Hammond. Maybe I can persuade you to rent a room. I keep a sort of boarding house myself, remember? Only you get my rooms free. Just what do you mean by that? How about Indra answering that question for you? and fix up the walkie-talkie the way Mr. London wants. Yeah, we can take our time doing it, too. Good going, Dennison. You get the point. All 
fall down. That's the quick way to lose, system. All your eggs in one basket. Quick way to win, you mean? I figured the mathematical chances right down to the last fraction. Lose in your own way, then. Hey, black, even. I'll take over, Captain Hammond. Why you two ever came back to Zalabar is beyond me. Come on. Tell me, Mr. Stanton, that all agents at the United Peace Foundation are instructed to obey local laws. How else could a peace foundation win respect for international laws if it disregarded local laws? It is not part of our duty, for example, to blow up the pool of light. You see, Indra, they haven't been accused of anything, but they are already pretending innocence. Indra's question was an accusation. Especially since Mr. London, or should I say Sir Eric Hazarius, sent his secretary here to front for him. Say anything you like. Enough of this. Tribal laws have been broken. The safety of Dr. Elmore's expedition endangered. My authority weakened. My wealth, which depends upon local goodwill, threatened. And all of it caused by the vandalism of this gentleman. And for what purpose? To discredit Mr. London. Or planned by him to discredit us. I think that Jeffrey London and Sir Eric Azarius are two names for one man. If so, he is no philanthropist. Ask him what he really expects Dr. Elmore to find for him in the lost city of the jungle. I ask nothing. I command here. I judge you guilty. Go to the temples of Pendrag. It is forbidden territory to strangers. You go with my permission. Bow before the shrine and beg forgiveness. Publicly acknowledging guilt without trial? If you refuse, I'll turn you over to the tribesmen. Are you sure the destruction of the temples can be accomplished so that it will appear as if Pendrang's legendary glowing goddess is punishing those two? Depends upon whether they are taken to walk or talk with them. I know. That's the weakness in your plan. You can't be sure. Fairly certain. They have no way of knowing when my men report by air to Sir Eric. They will have the radio tuned in, therefore, as much as possible. Dr. Grab and I came in with a part of the hieroglyphics that Dad has been able to translate so far. No doubt Mr. London will be delighted. Why, this discovery alone is worth the cost of the expedition. It may provide a lead to the long-lost image of the glowing goddess. Thanks for telling us, Margie. Are you going to Mr. London's now? Oh, no, shopping. I need clothes. Well, wish me luck. Why? I know Marjorie and her father haven't the slightest idea that Jeffrey London isn't what they're thinking. They look upon him as a benefactor. Hadn't you better say something to them, Rod? Not unless they're in danger from London's activities. As it is, they provide a cover for Sir Eric to look for whatever he wants in Pendrang. Who would think that Geoffrey London, interested in lost cities, is actually Sir Eric Hazaris, interested in war? Having convinced the world that Sir Eric was killed in an accident, whatever Sir Eric is after must have to do with war. Perhaps it is more important to find out what it is than to prove him alive. That's exactly what we have to find out, starting by walking into a trap set for us at the temples. Do you think Indra is allied with Sir Eric? For a percentage of the profits. Then don't go near the temples. You shouldn't anyway. That's where we've got to go. If we're careful and lucky, it may force Indra to show her hand. That's another way of saying it may bring Sir Eric out into the open. If you don't mind, I'll take this radio with us. We may pick up something worth hearing. By all means, and for another reason, tune in on Tal's set. If worse comes to worse, we can communicate with you. Set the wavelength for it, Tal. Maybe Sir Eric Azarius, alias Jeffrey Lennon, isn't as smart as he thinks he is. Yeah, there you are. A man-made earthquake by radio. You've done your part, Gavron. Now all we can do is to wait for Marlowe's report. The translation of that tablet by Dr. Elmore increases the need to eliminate Stanton and Tal Shan. The way you're getting rid of those two will not only convince the tribes the glowing goddess has punished them, but permit us to search the abandoned ruins of the temples later. For another lead is to where Meteorium is hidden. 
Well, if the statue of the glowing goddess exists, as you suppose, and if it gets its name from the fact that it's impregnated with meteorium, which is radioactive, then all we need is that statue. All we need? Is that enough meteorium for your purpose? A fraction of an ounce is more than enough. With it, I can guarantee a device that will stop the atomic bomb. Johnson is on his way to our radio at Expedition Headquarters. He will report the reaction of the tribesmen. Good. How about Stenton and Tal Shan? I saw them going toward the temples, and they should be inside by now. Tal Shan has the walkie-talkie. Excellent. Ready. Tune the vibrations of the supersonic waves to that of any building, and the building will be shattered. The radio that Tal Shan carries is merely a focal point for the sound waves. Is that sound coming from the radio? It doesn't seem to be. The strangest noise I've ever heard. Reports from our offices all over the world are encouraging. Nations actually seem anxious to make peace work at last. Make the United Nations practical by giving the international organization power to enforce international laws, and peace will be a reality. Unfortunately, there are too many warmongers still too powerful in too many nations. That's one of our problems. It's up to us to expose them with agents like Rod Stanton. It'll certainly be a good beginning. The day Rod reports from Pendrang, that Sir Eric Hazarius is dead. Tell Shan and Stanton ought to be inside the Forbidden Temples of Pendrang by now. And Johnson. We'll go to our station at Expedition Headquarters and report the reaction of the tribesmen from there. Did Tal Shan understand him take the walkie-talkie with them? Tal Shan. <laughs> the tribesmen will blame them for everything. Giving us a free hand to get what we want. 
Without the world learning that Jeffrey London is merely another name for Sir Eric Hazarius. Ready. Tune the vibrations of the supersonic wave to that of any building, and it will shatter the building. Is that sound coming from the radio? It doesn't seem to be. Strangest noise I've ever heard. I guess that was a man-made earthquake, courtesy of Jeffrey London, put on for our benefit. But how? Some sort of a sonic wavelength. That walkie-talkie we got from London's man, that was probably part of the setup. We knew we were walking into a trap set by Indra at London's instigation, but nothing like this. The tribes will now believe us guilty of destroying the temples as well as a pool of light. Of course. They'll be told that the glowing goddess destroyed us for trespassing and the desecrated temples with us. But why such a complicated way to get rid of us? To let London get to the statue of the glowing goddess. He's got a clue to it from that tablet found by Dr. Elmore. I believe that statue must be hidden somewhere in those temples. I see. Strangers poking among ruins aren't the same as guilty strangers trespassing in sacred temples. I'll go to Zalabar and check on London. You visit Dr. Elmore. Try and learn all you can about that tablet he found. of the temples following the destruction of the pool of light has infuriated the tribesmen. I don't blame them. Unfortunately, however, for Rod and me, they will be sure to blame us. Nonsense. And if they do... It won't be as easy to exonerate Rod and Tal Shan as you may believe, Dad. I've just come from Zalabar, remember? And I've seen too many angry, unreasonable people. I had hoped to stay here until I heard from Rod, but under the circumstances... All well, the more reason for you to stay. I don't want to jeopardize the expedition, but I'm sure that Mr. London will agree with me that humanity is more important than archaeology. Station one, calling headquarters. Johnson, calling headquarters. Headquarters, standing by. Come in, Johnson. Not so fast. Repeat, please. Something wrong. Got it. Anything else? Hold on. What do you want Johnson to do now, sir? Return here, Johnson, as soon as possible. Signing off. What did Johnson report? Tribes in the wild. Tal Shan is with Dr. Elmore. He and Stanton escaped, but Johnson didn't hear where Stanton has gone. Well, it's all for the best. Neither of them can go far enough to escape the punishment of the tribesmen. Suppose the tribesmen turn against Dr. Elmore because Tal Shan is with him. Well, if that happened, we'll say that we're holding Tal Shan for the tribesmen. Better go out there, Greb, and stand by for orders. Marlow, keep watch upstairs. You know, Gaffron. I have a feeling you won't have to wait much longer for the meteorium you need. Your defense against the atomic bomb should be completed soon now. We must have meteorium, remember. From everything I can gather, we should find it in the statue. In that case, you will soon be able to sell the atomic bomb defense, and the world will bid for it. I hope so. In the meanwhile, I have a detail to take care of. 
Mr. Rod Stanton, agent for the United Peace Foundation. You're late this evening, Mr. Stanton. Hello there. You are surprised I should know you? Sort of. My ears act as my eyes. Oh, you recognize my footsteps. Yours and many others. I spoke to Mr. London when he went into the casino a short while ago. He was even more surprised than you. I'll bet he was. Is hard to get him as he comes out. Welcome back yet, McConnor. Not yet, Rod. Our friend Jeffrey Linden has a sense of humor. You were lucky to get away. Very lucky. I don't suppose you saw Mr. London. No, but I picked up a set of fingerprints that might give us some information. Good. I'll break them down right away and read your description of them to headquarters for identification. While you're doing that, I'll accept Jeffrey Linden's invitation. Mathematically, nothing's wrong. All I have to do now is double up and bet all I've lost. The Indra is free to see you, gentlemen, for a few minutes. It's about time, Doc. Mr. Melbourne, may I speak with you, please? Yes, uh, pardon me. Stanton got away from us at the house. After finding the note in the wastebasket, I have the feeling he will be angry enough to come here looking for Sir Eric. You'll find him all right, and a warm welcome besides. You better talk things over with Sir Eric, and don't make a move until he gives you the signal. Wait. I'm sorry, Mr. London, but I think it will be necessary to change your plans. The gentleman you made the engagement to meet in the casino is due any minute. I can see Indra while you attend to the other matter. Time, Indra, you can be very annoying. Coming from you, Mr. Malburn, some women would take that as a compliment. Harris taught me that you are very busy, so I won't take too much of your time. Oh, that's quite considerate of you. When we first met, you promised me your cooperation, for which I agreed to pay you one-third of all profits. That is correct. 
a bad bargain for you, but um, you had to make it. But I haven't found yet what I came for. And you haven't told me what it is. But I do know that you expect to find it in the ruins of the Pendrang temples. Possible, but I'm I... I'm sorry. Your expedition will not be permitted to enter those ruins until I know exactly what it is you're after. And when I tell you that, I'm at your mercy. Perhaps. On the other hand, your world connections are just as valuable to me as my authority here in Pendrang is essential to you. You're very shrewd. I know it to play it that way. I have to think it over. Don't take too long. I may be compelled to change my mind and tell the tribesmen that I consider Rod Stanton innocent and then take him into my confidence. For example, about a secretary who's more important than anyone thinks. I understand. I'm accepting your invitation, Mr. Lenny. It's a rather an unusual sort of an invitation. Let's come to the point, Stanton. Just why are you so interested in Mr. London's affairs? We're especially curious to know what there is about a lost city in the jungle. Bring a man like Sir Eric Azarius to this corner of the world. Are you not confusing Mr. London with someone else? I don't think so, but I'll tell you why. How are you doing? Oh, just so-so. But I can't figure out a new game that's going on with no cut for the house. man he's contacted that way. Thanks. Our little talk has been very interesting, but Mr. London is a very busy man, so if you will excuse us. Just a moment, please. I know you gamble for big stakes, Mr. London, so before starting your play, you should familiarize yourself with some of the casino's special features. Look around and you'll see what I mean. We like our patrons to be comfortable and safe. While we don't like trouble, we're prepared for it. Thanks, Doc. Maybe sometime I can return the favor. Don't get any mistaken ideas. We just don't want the customers annoyed. Did Harris get wise? Yes. And I think Stanton will go directly to Dr. Elmer at the expedition headquarters. The tribesmen are out looking for him. From what Indra just said, I can understand why he was safe in Salabar. She ordered it so. But in the jungle, it will be different. drama stopped, Dad. Hmm? No, I didn't even hear it. The tribesmen have captured Rod. Why? Ask Indra and Jeffrey London. They'll never give him a chance to explain. There are the drums again. They say Rod is going to be taken to the lion pit. No one has ever escaped from there. This is one time we're going to upset tradition. Come on, Tal.
without food and water. Wait here. It's better I go alone. Thank you. Jeffrey London's fingerprints are definitely those of Sir Eric Hazarius. The fact, gentlemen, that Sir Eric is still alive adds to the difficulties of establishing world peace. The United Nations Council should be warned immediately. Wouldn't that be a mistake? Why? The man can't be arrested on a criminal charge. He's been too clever. And we can't get help to stand him. Pendrang will be completely isolated, even by air, for the next four or five months. Eric Hazarius. In Pendrang, Sir Eric Hazarius is known as Jeffrey London. Remember next time. Jeffrey London, then. Those two would have got rid of Stanton in the casino if I hadn't stopped it. Saving Stanton was good strategy. We may need him. 
I thought it was a good idea myself, but it didn't work. Stanton headed into the jungle. Into the jungle? I could protect him here in Zalabar, but not out there. The tribesmen wanted to punish him for the destruction of the temples. If they catch up with him, it'll mean the lion pit. Next Hal, for a minute, I thought I was... That can come later. Right now, we've got to get out of here. Hello, Marjorie. I meet the nicest people in the strangest places. If we don't move on, we're likely to meet some not so nice. I don't think it's wise for me to go back to Dr. Elmore's with you. Oh, our tribesmen are friendly, Rod. The careless word from one of them to the wrong person, and your father may be in trouble. Did you say you were going to the expedition when you were captured? Yes. Do you think your father would mind coming into Zalabar tomorrow? I think he'd be glad to. That'll give him a chance to talk to Mr. London. Fine. Sure, what I have to say is very important. All right, Rod. We may as well get started. Good morning, Doc. This is the first time I've been up at this hour in ages, so I wouldn't know. Coffee? You know, I've been doing considerable thinking since last night. About Malburn, Hazarius, and Stanton? Yes, but at the moment, Sir Eric and Malburn are the immediate problem. They certainly have something up their sleeves, Indra. Why should Sir Eric have come here under the name of Geoffrey Lunt? And why should Malburn have agreed to pay you one-third of all of his profits without an argument? Profits from what? From something connected with the archaeological expedition search for the fabled lost city of the jungle. We've got to find out what that something is. Greb is Eric's man, but not that archaeologist. Dr. Elmore's honest, so is his daughter. I'm sure of all that, but I'm also sure that Malburn doesn't trust me any further than I trust him. The fewer people you trust, the less chance you have of being double-crossed. That's one of the reasons for his success, yours too very true. But my success depends upon my power and control over the tribesmen. Now, Malburn knows that I agree to the destruction of the temples. On the other hand, you're probably one of the few people in the world who knows that Sir Eric is only a front for this Malborn. That's what they call a stalemate. I threaten them, but they threaten me. I know, but what are you going to do about it? Let the expedition search the ruins of the Pendrang temples for some clue to the legendary statue of the glowing goddess. But what about Staten? The tribesmen didn't get him because he's back in Zalaba. He's an agent of the United Peace Foundation. He's been after Sir Eric for a long time without realizing that Malvern's the man he's looking for. Why do anything about him? I'll get word of Sir Eric right away. Anything exciting on the air, Kurtz? Just routine news. This inactivity, Sir Eric, may cost us dearly. Scientists are working all over the world to find means of controlling the atomic bomb. Well, we have the advantage, Gaffer. You know how to defend against it. They are still trying to find a way. Knowing and doing are two different things. Until you get me some meteorium, I cannot do anymore. Rest assured, nothing is going to stop me from getting that element. 
Many nations will scramble to buy a device that makes the atomic bomb a thing of the past. Read this. Uh, yes, this is more like it. Permission to go into the ruins. Forgive me, I underestimate you. Something has caused Indra to change her mind. Last night, she was very emphatic that we would not be allowed into the ruins unless she was told exactly what we expected to find. Well, could Stanton and she be working together? Well, if they are, they're in for a sad awakening. Once we have Meteorium in our possession, Indra is going to be taught a lesson. Grab is calling, sir. Yes, Grab. Dr. Elmore and his daughter have just left to go into town to meet Rod Stanton. Why, do you know? Well, he didn't confide in me, and naturally I couldn't ask him point blank. But I've arranged to stop the meeting from taking place, at least temporarily. Well, sooner or later, Dr. Elmore's going to find out who I am. The old fool will quit when he does, and we need him to translate the hieroglyphics we're finding. Stanton won't let him quit. He can check on us through Elmore. On the other hand, if you win Elmore's confidence, we can use him to check on Stanton. I'm not so sure. Well, I am. See to that nobody interferes with Dr. Elmore and his daughter keeping that appointment. I meant to ask you before, Marjorie. What do you know about this man, Stanton? As a matter of fact, very little. But he seems quite nice. Elmore and his daughter got a pretty good start on us. We'll get them before they reach Zalabar. That car behind seems to be following us. Fortune and I got here in time to keep those two men from robbing you. You certainly was, Grip. I didn't know highway robbery was a popular sport in Pendrang. The men probably lost all they had gambling at the casino and were trying to get some money. After this, I'll carry a gun. What would you do with one, Dad? You wouldn't know how to use it. I'll learn. I don't think you'll run into any more trouble, but just to make sure, I'll follow you into town. Thanks. Nice of you to come, Dr. Elmore. Well, Dad gave me quite an argument. I'm glad you persuaded him. When you work on hieroglyphics, you dislike interruption, that's all. Won't you sit down? Marjorie said that you had an important matter to discuss with me, Mr. Stanton. Very important. Do you know who's financing your archaeological expedition? Are you serious? Never more so in my life. Jeffrey London. That's what I thought you'd say. Did you ever hear of Sir Eric Hazarius? Well, who hasn't? Why? He's backing you. Oh, my dear young man, I just told you it was Jeffrey London. Jeffrey London is Sir Eric Hazarius. Rod, you can't mean that. I most certainly do. Well, the two men bear no resemblance to each other, whatever. I've seen pictures of Sir Eric. Rod wouldn't say it was so unless he had proof. Sorry to make you monkeys out of us, Grab. Yeah, we're following your orders and keeping Elmore from getting into town. Then you turn up and start shooting. That don't make sense. I had to change my plans. I couldn't reach you. Anyway, none of my bullets came anywhere near you. Yeah, maybe so. But we'd have been on a nice fix if Elmore and the girls started shooting. Neither of them carry guns. I knew that. Okay. What do we do now? Go over to Tal Shan's hotel. If Tal and Rod go out after Dr. Elmore leaves, follow them. Find out where they're going and make sure they don't get back. Okay. 
just before your arrival, confirmation came in special code from the Peace Foundation by radio that the fingerprints of Jeffrey London are identical with those of Sir Eric Azaria's. Well, they asked for proof, and you gave it to me. Still somewhat of a shock. Naturally, you had every reason to trust Jeffrey London. Of course, there's only one thing for me to do now. Your sign. I wish you wouldn't do that, Dr. Elmore. An archaeologist must be an important cog in Sir Eric's machine. Rod's right, Dad. You want me to continue on as though I know nothing? Yes, and in that way, we have a very good chance of finding out what he's really after. Some element, I believe, needed to perfect a supersonic wave device. Hmm, that could explain his interest in the possibility that the statue of the glowing goddess is fact instead of legend. What did the hieroglyphics on the tablet say about it? They indicate that the statue did exist, and that it was originally somewhere in the Pendrang temples. That's why Sir Eric was so disappointed when Indra refused us permission to search the ruins. He'd be more disappointed if he knew that Tal Shan had discovered an entrance to a tunnel that apparently has been sealed off for generations. I'd like to see that tunnel. You'll probably have the opportunity as soon as Tal and I investigate it. Well, we won't keep you then. Elmore must have been doing some looking on his own account. Yeah, and some talking, too. Flip for it. I'll take this one. All right. Separated here. Yeah, they may not. We'll stick together.
more messages from Rod Stanton? Not a word since we sent him that special radio code telling him that Jeffrey London's fingerprints are those of Sir Eric Hazarius. I wonder if he has figured out why Sir Eric is so interested in financing an archaeological expedition to find a lost jungle city. Evidently not, or we'd have heard. But he knows Sir Eric is a warmonger and a constant threat to world peace. I'm glad I'm not confronting an opponent like Sir Eric in a place like Pendrine. You know, Gaffron, I have a feeling you won't have to wait much longer for the meteorium you need. Your defense against the atomic bomb should be completed soon now. We must have meteorium, remember. You are sure the element exists. You have reason to believe that it exists only here in Pendrag. From everything I can gather, we should find it in the statue. In that case, you will soon be able to sell the atomic bomb defense, and the world will beat for it. I hope so. In the meanwhile, I have a detail to take care of, Mr. Rod Stanton. Hotel! I drew a blank, Rod. The tunnel I followed let me out back there. Did you have any luck? If you call it luck, bumping into two of Sir Eric's men and falling into a fire pit. But it was luckier later. I landed on a ledge and came through another tunnel. And what I found, I'm sure, will be of great interest to Dr. Elmore. What is it? Hieroglyphics. In what looks like a sealed off tomb. Dr. Elmore's translation should be interesting. Shall we tell him? You do that. At once. But what about Greb? Dr. Elmore is an honest scientist. But with Sir Eric Hazarius backing the expedition, the chances are that Greb is really Sir Eric's man. Let Greb know. If Greb is Sir Eric's man, what Sir Eric does may give us a lead to what he's after. This photograph substantiates Tal Shan's belief that the symbols on that wall are important. There's no doubt we found the hidden tomb of the glowing goddess. You see that symbol? That represents the glowing goddess herself. Doctor, what do the other symbols mean? Beware. Whoever enters these portals faces the shining death that never was on land or sea. I don't understand. Well, all ancient vaults have death threats over their entrances. One of the legends of the glowing goddess tells of a hidden source of death that will forever protect the statue. And there's also another legend that insists that the statue is in the long lost city of the jungle. We've just come from a tunnel. I believe both those legends are based on fact, Dr. Grimm. You mean we found the lost city of the jungle I'm underground? I'm sure of it. But Rod Stanton is the one who found it for us. 
Scientifically, that's very unimportant. When do we start the excavations? I intend to proceed with caution. We'd better obtain permission to open the doorway from Indra as well as from the tribesmen. I think you're right, but uh, that'll take time. A discovery that's been buried for centuries can wait a little longer. Not too long, Doctor. I'll help you. I will report to Mr. London. By all means, Mr. London has a way of getting what he wants. Greb is doing the right thing reporting to Geoffrey London. I wonder if he knows that London is actually Sir Eric Hazarius. Rod Stanton hasn't confided in him, Marjorie. But suppose Sir Eric has. Tell Shan spoke of Stanton's discovery in front of Greb. He wouldn't have done that without Stanton's approval. I expected to be here earlier, but was delayed. May I see Indra? Sure. Only you'll have to wait. Rod Stanton's with her now. Law is flexible in Pendray. It uh, changes with my opinions. Does that mean that you also change your opinion about Sir Eric Azarias? It took you longer than I thought to learn who Geoffrey London was. To prove it, you mean. I was sure of it when I came here. And it wasn't long until I was also sure that you knew. My opinion of the United Peace Foundation has increased, Mr. Stanton, since I've learned that Tao Shan and you represent it. I'm glad to hear that, because I'm here to ask officially about Sir Eric. What's his status with you? Exactly the same as yours. No special privileges? Anyone with enough money can have special privileges in Pendrang. By the way, when I came the first time to Salabar, you offered me some tablets to improve the drinking water. Can you get me some now? All you need. Thanks. Sir Eric is always willing to pay for everything he wants. For the $5,000 banknote? And more, if necessary. Number 15, black, odd. Still haven't found a winning combination. You better quit, system. Don't be too sure. I'm going to get some more chips. Where's Sir Eric? He met Hammond on the street. Why? I have news from Dr. Elmore. Hereafter, it might be wiser, perhaps, to let Dr. Elmore make his reports in person, either to me or to Sir Eric. He will probably suspect you, thanks to Stanton telling him about Sir Eric. But Dr. Elmore told me all about what Stanton said. He told Stanton that he'd seen pictures of Sir Eric, and nothing could convince him that Mr. London and Sir Eric are the same man. Did you ever stop to consider that Dr. Elmer might have said this purposely just to gain your trust? Now, what have you got to report? The hidden tomb of the glowing goddess has been discovered. But Dr. Elmore doesn't intend to open it without the permission of the tribesmen and Indra. To be safe, we will open it ourselves. I thought that's what you say. I'll get tribesmen and start the work at once. Wait. Were you followed here by any chance? No. But Tal Shan is outside in the car. Oh, I saw him when I came in. He's waiting for Stanton. Here's the money for the trials. And take this and play a roulette until Stanton leaves. We can't afford to add to his suspicions just now. And I don't want you to be followed. Interested in profits, not in causes. At least I know where you stand. What you and Sir Eric do, so long as it doesn't interfere with me, is your own business. And you will remain neutral? For the present. Because there is a strong possibility that before you're through, one or the other of you will be dead. And you'll be able to dictate terms to the survivor? Exactly. That's good enough for me. I wonder if it would be worth my while to tell the United Peace Foundation that Sir Eric's secretary, Mr. Malburn, is really the greatest warmonger of them all.
five. Red, odd. I saw Greb gambling, I knew something was up. That's not his character. He was stalling, waiting for me to leave. Apparently, you're right, because he left the moment he thought we had gone. This time, we should be able to follow him without any interference from Sir Eric. Shan parked in front of the casino, but he was right. Contact Reb's car at once. Calling G-14. Calling G-14. Reb speaking. Rod Stanton is trailing you with Tal Shan. What do you want me to do? Take a roundabout route, use up plenty of time, and wind up at the Galuga Trail. Got it. Then what? Stop your car, get out and go on foot down the Galuga Trail. I'll contact Johnson. He'll have some of our men ready to take care of anybody who follows you. Signing off. Jungle trail here. Let's follow him. You stay with the cars, I'll trail him. Tough spot. It was a planned ambush, no doubt of that. Let's get back to the car. One thing is certain, we know where Greb stands. Greb heard you tell Dr. Elmore about the hidden tomb of the glowing goddess. Rushed to report to Sir Eric and got his orders. We've got to get to that tomb and find out why Sir Eric is so interested in it. I'll cut through the jungle. When you're ready, go to field headquarters. Tell Marge and Dr. Elmore about Greb. The door to the tomb is right through there. Good work, Killipa. You really drove your men. Pay them off and then come back here. Well, we're ready to open it up. Yeah, but didn't you say there was a death threat written on there? That doesn't worry me. We'll let the tribesmen go in first. Then we won't run into trouble with Indra or the tribesmen. Suits me. All right, lead the way. To you, Culipa, goes the honor of first entering the tomb. It is well.
dead. Did you see that expression of terror on his face? But there's nothing in there that could have killed him. Go in and bring him out. Not me. I'm not going to put a foot in there. Hey, grab him. Grab him. What's the matter? Stanton just came out of the jungle and he's headed here. Stanton. No. We'll let him come in and enter the tomb and serve as our guinea pig. Glad to see you, gentlemen, and happy to report that my speaking engagement was worthwhile. You found the audience receptive to our idea of world peace? Most receptive. The average man and woman want international control to prevent war and hate warmongers as much as we do. Once the nations agree to that, we're really started on the road to peace. Have you heard from Rod Stanton since our message to him that Jeffrey London is Sir Eric Hazarius? Yes, and Rod has really accomplished something. Dr. Elmore, the head of Sir Eric's archaeological expedition, has agreed to work with him and Tal Shan. That's the first good news we've had from Pendrang. And there can be no doubt that Dr. Greb, who is with you, Dr. Elmore, is Sir Eric's man. No doubt at all. You say that you and Rod separated. Where's Rod now? He should be at the sealed tomb of the glowing goddess. He figured Greb was going there. He's probably right. Then he'll be on hand if Greb opens the tomb. Greb! 
What's the matter? Stan just came out of the jungle and he's headed here. Stan. No. We'll let him come in and enter the tomb and serve as our guinea pig. I told you before, Grub, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> Did you see Stanton in there? I didn't see anything. No man can inhale that gas and live. Then nobody can get anything out of that. At least not until some way is found to shut off that gas. But we'll let Elmore worry about that. poison gas in the tomb of the glowing goddess, Sir Eric. A workman was killed by it before Stanton died. Can the gas be pumped out so we can work in there? If we can find how it gets in. You said there was no gas present when you first broke the seal on the door. Not a bit. The device was installed to prevent trespassing, but it also protects what we want. That rare element that you think is in the statue. With meteorium, this is a perfect defense against the atomic bomb and the world at our feet. Without it, we have nothing but an impractical idea. I know that. Our problem is to make it safe to examine the statue so that Dr. Elmore can go ahead with his work. With Stanton dead, that shouldn't be too difficult. Mr. Stanton, you are kind to stop and talk to me, Mr. Stanton. I find you very interesting. that man down there, Carl, I told you, the blind beggar. Stanton? Take care of him after he gets past me. Remember what I said and be on guard. Thanks, I will. Oh, sir. The street doesn't seem wide enough for both of us, Sir Eric. You insist upon calling me Sir Eric Hazarius. You're equally insistent on being called Jeffrey Linden, I know but I prefer your real name. You know, Stanton, I have a feeling that you're going to leave here rather suddenly. There's no way in or out for several months. I'll be here that long. I'd give you odds on that if I were a gambler. It's too bad you're not. I'd risk a couple of hundred. Time will tell. It usually does, Sir Eric. <clears throat> Confidentially, just between the two of us, I am really... Jeffrey London. I 
I've been expecting something like this to happen. So have I. That's why I'm still alive. That sure thing you were talking about didn't work, did it? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm holding you for murder. Take a look under that man. He's got a gun in his hand and fired first. All right, come on, move on. Move on. Either of you know him? I think he worked for... Uh, he was one of my men. Probably had a personal grudge against Stanton and tried to settle it. I shouldn't be at all surprised, Captain Hammond. Watch your step in the future, Stanton. We don't like shooting on the streets. Neither do I. For your trouble, Captain. Thanks. Don't worry. I'll take care of everything. What did you expect to gain by presenting a $5,000 banknote to Doc Harris? What did I have to lose? $5,000 might have proved to be a good investment if your manager hadn't been quite so loyal. Thanks for the compliment. Also for the five grand. I've come to the conclusion, Mr. Malvern, that the original bargain I made with you was a poor one. One third of all profits from what I hope to find, a magnificent fortune. You tricked the world for years by hiding behind Sir Eric. You've just tried to bribe Harris. Did you think me fool enough not to expect treachery? No, but the nature of what I hope to find through my expedition compels me to be honest with you. That's better. Something of world importance or war importance? I cannot answer without revealing my secret, and I don't intend to do it. As a matter of fact, it's a part of our agreement. Agreements change in Pendrang, depending upon what I think best for me. My control here gives me that advantage. For the time, it is so. That sounded like a declaration of war to me. It was. Have they cleaned you out, system? Just about, Mr. Malvern. Somehow, my plan of strategy doesn't work the way it should. Keep trying. If you need some more cash, look me up. Well, I, I don't know how to thank you. Forget it. Maybe sometime you can do me a favor. With all your authority, Indra, he could make trouble. Perhaps. But Mr. Malvern has no ally. And I can have two. Rod Stanton and Tal Shan? Count them as one. They're dependable, represent a very powerful organization, and could prove a deciding factor should I need them, and they aren't interested in profits. Okay, for one, but who's the other? Dr. Elmore, an honest man, a friend of Stanton's, and the one person sure to know what the expedition finds. Professor Grebb is a scientist with an excellent reputation. He's been with me since the beginning of the expedition and has proved to be a most valuable and cooperative assistant. But would Rod or Tal Shan have said what they did about him if it weren't true? Their suspicions about Greb are as unfounded as those about Jeffrey London being Sir Eric Azari's. Well, nevertheless, if I were you, I wouldn't let Jeffrey London see the translation of that broken plaque until you're definitely certain. Now listen to me, Marjorie. Oh, let's not argue, Dad. But for once, be guided by me. <laughs> Stop that. Promise? You minx. You can wrap me around your little finger. Promise? All right, I promise. Have you finished the translation? Yes. Now, where are we hide it? Well, the most obvious place would be the best. No one will think of looking under these old records. Well, those belong to Greb. I know it. Going out to the excavations? Want to come along? I'd like to see you go without me.
Well, Rod, your plan worked. So far, so good. We have one advantage over Sir Eric. We know that Greb is his man. And he has every reason to believe that you, Dr. Elmore, still think he is Jeffrey London. Now what? That depends on the translation your father wrote. According to Dr. Elmore's translation, the cave of eternal light should be about here. That's on the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. You'd better get out there, Greb. Now, perhaps that is our only chance. What do you mean by that? Well, my tests show there is no meteorium in the samples that you brought me from the statue of the glowing goddess. So the only thing to do is to go out there and see what you can find. But what if I run into Elmore? I'll go with you. Would that be advisable? To date, you've shown no interest in the excavations. He's right, Sir Eric. It might start the doctor thinking about what Stanton told him. At present, I'm sure he thinks you're Jeffrey London. Mm -hmm. Well, use my speedboat and take Marlow. Right. I'll report what we find by radio. Good. I almost forgot. I took a picture of that half plaque that uh, Dr. Elmore has. Gaffin will develop the film immediately. Oh, yes. This is an enlargement of the picture taken by Greb with his fountain pen camera. And uh, this is an enlargement of the tablet found earlier. Now, when you compare the two, and then compare the translations of each made by Dr. Elmore, you find a discrepancy. In other words, the second translation is false. It was planted for Greb to find. <laughs> Dr. Elmore is a little more clever than I thought. Kurtz, contact Greb on the speedboat. What are you going to tell Elmore if he's beat us to it? Well, I found the translation among my papers, reported to Mr. London, and was ordered to follow it up. Headquarters calling G-14. Urgent. Come in, G-14. G-14, answering your call. Over. You're headed into a trap on the other side of the lake. Turn back. A trap? OK. Was that about a trap? Orders are to turn back. Something's gone wrong.
without, I think, arousing any suspicion by our interest. I have all the data on Pandrang. The cause of world peace, international trust and respect will be handicapped if Rod fails to stop Sir Eric and whatever he's up to this time. G-14, report, please. G-14 reporting. We're being chased by Rod Stanton and Tal Shen in another speedboat, and they're catching up. As soon as they get close enough, I'll chuck grenades at them. Signing off. Lucky for us, Gaffron found out Dr. Elmore was trying to trick us. If he hadn't, Greb and I would have walked into Stanton's trap. Instead of Stanton and Tal Shan walking into ours. It's time that Dr. Elmore and Sir Eric had an understanding. Shall we bring Dr. Elmore here? No, Sir Eric will handle that himself. You and Marlowe will go with him. London. This is a surprise. I thought it about time to visit you. Where is Miss Elmore? Well, I trace up at the diggings. Photographing some ancient artwork just uncovered. I came to see you about the translation of that last plaque you found. Oh, yes. Very interesting. It's not complete, but I consider it one of the most important discoveries of the expedition. I made an important discovery too, Dr. Elmore. Indeed? Yes. There was a mistake, almost a fatal mistake, in your translation. But pardon me, Mr. London. There are only a few archaeologists in the world who know enough about such hieroglyphics to question me. You are not one of those scholars. Oh, I'm not questioning your scholastic qualifications, only your motive. Now, why did you deliberately include false information? I might almost believe it was some sort of a trap. It was a trap, Mr. London. A trap in which I was hoping to catch the greatest enemy of world peace, Sir Eric Hazarius. Oh. That explains it. As soon as men like you learn my real identity, they invariably jump to a false conclusion. Surely you don't deny that you've earned your great but dubious reputation. That's exactly why I have financed your expedition under an assumed name, in the hope of proving that I have been sorely misjudged. My only purpose is to benefit humanity, to help make the world a better place, to convince people by this action that I am not the apostle of disaster that they believe. I don't believe you. 
And I don't know what lies behind your interest in this expedition. But I do know that I won't be a party to it. Well, now that we understand each other, let's get down to business. I want the correct translation of that plaque. You won't get it from me. Now, Dr. Elmore, I'm going to take you where you'll be only too glad to do what I want. There's a rumpus here of some sort. Dad isn't here. I wish I hadn't gone down to the lake to meet you. If only there was something to tell us what happened. There is. Look. E R I C. Sir Eric. I thought he was behind this, but your father left us definite proof. You were right, Rod. Sir Eric's found out about that false translation. I wonder if they took the plaque, too. Well, Dad usually keeps important things like that in a hidden compartment in his desk here. That's what we've been waiting to find out, lady. I'll take charge of that little item now. Well, there's nothing here. Why? didn't get what they came for. The plaque is gone. Dad didn't tell me, but am I glad he has a new hiding place. We know Sir Eric hasn't got it. He wouldn't have left Marlowe and Johnson here otherwise. But he has got Dr. Elmore. We'd better see Indra. Yes, but busy. My father's disappeared. Indra already knows that. Mr. London, as the back of the doctor's expedition, is very much concerned. I can't understand why you, of all people, are so upset about Dr. Elmore. He's the head of my expedition. If anything happens to him, it might reflect on me. Not on you, Malvern. You're too clever. You've been hiding behind Sir Eric in this, like in everything else. As you alone know, Indra, hurt Sir Eric, and you hurt me. Oh, I see. Well, then there's no need to bother Indra. Thank you. Isn't Mr. London here? No. But uh, can I help you? I'm his secretary. Mr. Melbourne, I'm Miss Elmore. Yes, I know. Thank you, but there isn't anybody but Mr. London I can turn to. Perhaps uh, I can assist you. It's about my dad. He's... <laughs> I know, I know, Miss Elmore. He's apparently vanished. <laughs> I've looked everywhere. <laughs> Sit down. Try to calm down, my dear. <laughs> the police have been notified. It's only a matter of time before your father is found. I'm so worried about it. Let me offer you something to quiet your nerves. I'm sorry to be such a nuisance. Oh, you are not. 
Marjorie, plant that microphone. My husband, Tal Shan, is near Miss Elmore. And if I were she, I'd feel safe. Drink this, my dear, and you will feel better. But what could have happened to Dad? I don't know, but rest assured that Mr. London will do everything in his power to find out. Well, somehow I feel a little better. Thank you for your consideration, Mr. Melbourne. Oh, it was no trouble at all, Miss Elmer. You're such a comfort. And if I find anything out about your father, I'll let you know. I'm sure you will. But I'm going to start pestering Captain Hammond. He takes things too easy. I can breathe easier now that Marjorie's out of that house. She's a brave girl. So are you. I'd like to watch her working on Hammond. He's going to have to do some real detective work in self-defense. Unless Captain Hammond is cooperating with Sir Eric. Yeah, Dr. Elmore is a stubborn fool. By refusing to translate that plaque, he prevents you from locating Meteorium, which in turn prevents me from perfecting my defense against the atomic bomb. The greatest discovery possible at this moment. Unfortunately, he guesses correctly that I intend to sell whatever it is I'm after to the highest bidder, war or no war. I can't trust him. So Dr. Elmore still refuses to make the translation. What are you going to do now, Greb? There's only one thing to do. That's why I'm here. You let me go to work on that, Doctor. I know a few tricks. That's the general idea, but it depends on what Sir Eric decides. Sure thing. How did you pick up that conversation? I don't know, sir. I was fishing for news. Ever hear anything that went on upstairs before? I know, never. Can't understand it. I can. I've been wondering why Dr. Elmore's daughter came to see me. Now I know. She concealed a wireless microphone. Huh. It's likely to be very useful to us. Now we're getting someplace, Lakana. We know that Jeffrey London's an alias for Sir Eric Cazarius. That Sir Eric has Dr. Elmore. And that Grab, like Marlon Johnson's, working for him. Possibly you may get a lead to Dr. Elmore through Johnson and Marlowe. Or through Greb. Uh, hello, Greb. What about Dr. Elmore? I can't get a thing out of him. He still refuses to talk. Let him sweat it out. He'll give us the information soon enough. And even Stanton would never think to look for him at the old abandoned house of the beggars. House of Beggars. That's it, Lakana. That's what we've been waiting for. Well, go to the Street of the Beggars. You won't have any trouble finding the house. Even its door is falling off, and no one lives there. Have Tal Shan follow me as soon as he returns with Marjorie. I'm on my way.
headquarters. Calling headquarters. Even getting rid of you, Stanton, presents difficulties. I had hoped to use the House of Beggars to demonstrate to Dr. Elmore the futility of resisting me. As it is, I fear I must sacrifice it in order to prove to you that radio microphones hidden in chairs by pretty young ladies are very dangerous to those who have put them there. Just what this organization has been striving to achieve. Vigilant awareness in the cause of world peace. A message in special code from one of our agents working with Rod Stanton and Pendrang. From Tal Shan? No, from Tal Shan's wife, Lakana. There is no doubt that Jeffrey London is Sir Eric Hazarius, and that Sir Eric is responsible for Dr. Elmore's disappearance. Getting rid of you, Stanton, presents difficulties. I had hoped to use the House of Beggars to demonstrate to Dr. Elmore the futility of resisting me. As it is, while this microphone, Mr. Stanton, that you had Miss Elmore conceived in my living room, has tricked you instead of me. Tal just left here. He'll never reach the House of Beggars in time to save Rod. <laughs> I'm sorry things didn't work out, Marjorie. 
I know that. And yet I can't help worrying about Dad. Now what can we do? The best thing for you to do is to go into Tal's office and stay there. We've got to be sure, Marjorie, that you're safe. And I think you are here. Well, I'll do what you want, Rod. Fair enough. Meantime, Tal and I'll drag Ned Zalabar. Since we received word of Dr. Elmore's disappearance, my men have been searching Zalabar from one end to the other. But so far, no trace of the missing man has been found. What about Sir Eric and Malborn? I investigated their quarters personally, but found nothing. Are you keeping track of Stanton? Stanton, Sir Eric, and Malborn. One or the other ought to lead you to Dr. Elmore, but continue your search. I want Dr. Elmore found and found quickly. Mind telling me why you're so interested in Dr. Elmore? I believe that he's the key to the whole situation, and that Stanton was getting too close, and that our friends, Sir Eric and Malborn, took personal charge of the doctor. And lucky for us, he doesn't know Sir Eric is only camouflage for Malborn. You hope to find out what's actually going on through Elmore. Exactly. Doctor, have you made up your mind to translate the broken plaque for us? Not until you can convince me that Sir Eric won't use the translation for some new war scheme. We've been very patient with you, Dr. Elmore. But even patience has its limits. Your threat is proof that Sir Eric will misuse the translation. All right, Johnson, see what you can do. I'll do it. But how can I translate the plaque? It isn't here. This photograph you gave me is smudged with ink and fingerprints. You can see for yourself. It's ruined. We can soon remedy that with a negative. There's your answer, Grim. You forget, Doctor, you still have the plaque in your possession. Yes. And only I know where it is, and it's going to stay that way. I can make him talk. I'll handle this, Johnson. Doctor, we'll give you just a little more time to decide to tell us where that plaque is hidden, and then... The answer will still be the same. We'll see. All right, Johnson. And even though Stanton escaped with the help of Talshad, we still have Dr. Elmore safe aboard the schooner without Stanton or Indra having the least idea where he is. Safe aboard the schooner does not solve our problem. It is necessary to have Meteorium to complete my invention that makes the atomic bomb useless. And Dr. Elmore is the only one that can lead us to that missing element. So he is therefore the only obstacle between you and world power. Patience with a man like Elmore won't be what we want. He knows we can't kill him because only he can tell us. Sir Eric. Hmm? It's going to be more difficult to get that translation than we thought. How great. Stubborn fool won't tell me anything. I repeat, sir, there are ways of making a man talk. And some of them, my dear Gaffron, less brutal, but just as effective as those which you advise. Hello, Governor. I hope you've got your stomach all set for some of this hot mulligan. It's the cook's specialty. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, Hubert's the name, Governor. Hubert. And I ain't that much liking for the name anyway. Well, I think it's a very nice name, Hubert. But I'm not very hungry. Oh, you've got to eat, Governor. That hot mulligan will do you good. Sort of perk you up. Well, maybe you're right. There you are, sir. You know, Governor, 
I ain't got much liking for this here business. What business? You know, what's uh, going on around here? You and the brig and all that. I'm afraid there's not very much we can do about it. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Governor. Now, uh, if you had a friend on the outside, you know, someone you'd like to send a message to, maybe I could fix it for you. How? Uh, there's lots of ways of doing things, Governor. But of course, it's uh, kind of risky, you know. I think I could arrange to have you well paid. 500? Yes. And Governor, you write a note, and I'll see it gets to the right party. I can't tell them to come here. Tell them not to say anything to anybody. But meet me with the 500 at half hours at 5 o'clock. And I'll take care of everything. How's this, Hubert? It's to my daughter. Well, that's fine, Governor. <laughs> Do they ever ask you any questions or search you when you leave the boat? Come to think of it, they do every once in a while. Then I'll just slip this note in with these cards and put them in the box. Good. They'll never suspect there's anything wrong with a deck of cards in your pocket. And at 5.30, Governor, you'll be waiting for a big surprise. the big surprise I promised you, Governor. Marjorie, you shouldn't have come here. Father and daughter reunited. Five hundred is chicken feed, Dr. Elmore, when you're playing with a man like Sir Eric, and my Cockney act is worth much more anyway. We know you care nothing for yourself, Doctor. But your daughter is a different matter. I'm sure you'd prefer telling me where that plaque is and translating it than to have anything happen to her. Don't listen to him, Dad. It's better that you and I should suffer than to let Sir Eric go on with a scheme that would bring suffering to millions. Like father, like daughter. You both have that same stubborn streak. It's just that we don't approve of Sir Eric or anything he stands for. Perhaps when you see what we have planned for you, you'll change your mind. There isn't anything you could do that would make us change our minds. Don't decide too quickly. Observe these small elements closely. They're very interesting. When they meet, I think you will find it a very forceful argument.
can see for yourselves. It would be extremely dangerous for anyone sitting in that chair. It's no use, Marjorie. I'd rather have it that way than to think we'd helped Sir Eric. I'll leave you alone for a few minutes to talk it over. Don't give up, Dad. There must be some way we can get help. There is. If Rod will only find it. I should have figured something like this would happen. She didn't come through the lobby. There's your answer. Rod. Marjorie, when this is delivered to you, meet the bearer with $500 at half arch. He will be waiting at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Please don't tell anyone about this meeting. Anxiously, Dad. Is it in Dr. Elmore's handwriting? Yes. Then Dr. Elmore has been tricked into writing it. No doubt about it. But Marjorie's in the trap by now. Probably she is. But maybe she thought it was a trap. That would explain why she left the note behind. But I can't understand how it was delivered. In that deck of cards, probably thrown through the window. Here, let me have those, Tal. Look. Markings on the edges. Rod, it could be a... It's a message. Dr. Elmore's smarter than Sir Eric. If we can only figure it out in time to do Marjorie and Dr. Elmore some good. What? Here, sort please. Spades on top, ace to the king. Hearts, clubs, and diamonds. That's where they're usually packed. Now we'll see what's what. This is it, Tal. Schooner. Schooner? Here in Mountain Lock Pendrang? It was built for river trade, but it was never practical. It's been rotting for years down in the basin. Maybe impractical as a schooner, but not as a hideout. Is there anything you want to tell me, Dr. Elmore? My father has nothing to say to you. Very well.
transcript of Rod Statton's code report by radio from Pendrang is astonishing. Sir Eric Cazarius is not even pretending any longer that he's Jeffrey London, but is holding Dr. Elmo, his own archaeological expert, a captive. It's typical of Sir Eric. Take what you want, law or no law. The warmonger who steals peace is the worst of all thieves. Fortunately, in this case, we have our own unofficial policeman, Rod Stanton, after Sir Eric. Dr. Elmo found out the truth from Rod, refused to continue, and so has disappeared. So Dr. Elmore is on the old schooner. We should have thought of that hulk before. A decaying monument to an ancestor who built it for river traffic that doesn't exist. How about Stanton and Tao Shan? They just went on board. Is there anything you want to tell me, Dr. Elmore? My father has nothing to say to you. Observe these small elephants closely. They're very interesting. When they meet, I think you will find it a very forceful argument. Take care of Marjorie, she's all right. You untie Dr. Elmore. You saw her again? Nowhere else, Crab. Down below. And this radio report from one of my agents states that many nations are vitally interested in your invention. Yeah, they ought to be. It's a perfect defense against the atomic bomb. But my device depends on any deorium, and you haven't got it for me yet. We're the only people who know that it exists in fact, instead of in theory. And exists only here, in Pendrang. But until you can make Dr. Elmore translate the hieroglyphics that will tell us where it is hidden, I cannot finish my work. Stanton and Tao Shan got Dr. Elmore and his daughter away from us. Oh, you fool! They took us by surprise. Now our hands are tied. We can do nothing. Our hands are never tied, Gaffin. Remember that. The window on that office of yours, Tal, is sure convenient. You're coming with me, Dr. Elmore. Why? Indra wants to talk to you. But Dad hasn't done anything. Don't get me wrong. I'm not arresting him. Captain Hammond only uses the window on unofficial business. But when he's going to arrest you, he comes through the door. In that case, I'll go along with you. Because if she has anything to say to Dr. Elmore, I've got something I'd like to say to her about Sir Eric. Dr. Elmore. Why is Indra so interested in him, Doc? She'll tell you. Stay out here, Captain. We'd like to have a little talk with you, Hammond. Taking a walk. You boys think you can get away with this? Why not? You know, Indra has hidden guards here. A signal for me would mean a couple of shots from us. And then where would you be? I think you two are just dumb enough to pull a stunt like this. You bet we are. Hey, what do you mean? Forget it. Where do we go? 
just up the hill away. Until a few days ago, I considered Jeffrey London my benefactor, solely interested, like myself, in finding the lost city of the jungle. Thank you, Dr. Elmore. And you say you have found the lost city? Yes, but not where I expected to. The city is underground. I should say that all of the land for a radius of five or six miles around Zalabar, mountain and jungle, is simply honeycombed. Not an insignificant find in itself. Why didn't you bring Dr. Elmore here instead of taking him to Indra? I couldn't. I was going to let you know where he was later. We've been paying you good money for information, Hammond. Sit down. I'm taking a chance being out of the casino. Indra might call for me. I'll only keep you a few minutes. Sit down. While you were a captive, didn't anyone explain why you were being held? Won't do any harm to tell her what little you know, Doctor. Greb, acting for Sir Eric, wanted me to translate some ancient symbols. Why did you refuse? I have no intention of contributing to another world war. Where were those symbols you refused to translate? On half of a broken plaque that we'd found. Half of a broken plaque? Without the other half, the translation was worthless. Sir Eric evidently didn't consider it so. Here's half of a broken plaque that's been in my family for generations. The light that never dies. Rod. This is the other half of the plaque that we have. Go ahead with the translation, Doctor. It should be interesting. There are certain hieroglyphics which I recognize, but there are many others which would take me a long time to translate. Gentlemen, let's be sensible. We're all after the same thing, to find out what it is Sir Eric wants. If you would assure us that whatever we find will be put to constructive use. Constructive use? It will be put to no other. Where is your half of the plaque, Doctor? It's behind a loose board in the wall at the field office. That does it. One of the impractical qualities of all true scientists, Doctor, is their belief that people in general are just as honest as they are. You will remain in my custody until Captain Hammond brings me the plaque. But if you try to make me translate the plaque, you'll be wasting your time just as he did. We'll see. Have Stanton put in jail for the time being. Indra is still in control here. I'll tell Hammond to get the plaque. All right, Stanton. I'm glad you're here this time, Mr. Malborn. I've got some real information for you. Stanton's in jail. Sir Eric would like to hear that. What more? I uh, know the location of the plaque that Elmore has. $10,000. Where's the plaque? Hidden behind the wall at the expedition headquarters. It'll better be there. I'm sorry, now I didn't hold Johnson and Marlowe here. Where are they? On the way back to the excavations. Marlowe keeps always in touch with us over the radio. Let Kurtz tell him what to do. You'll have to go out there and act for Indra. But you don't have to get there too soon, do you? Uh, just in time to claim Tal Shan robbed the headquarters. And that will put him with Stanton. Good. Tal Shan. I am sorry for not speaking. I was thinking of something else. Brought Stanton, your friend? Yes. You do not have to go into the casino to learn about him. You have news? He has been arrested. Dr. Elmore, too? No, he is still in the casino, but nobody can reach him without Indra's permission. Where is Rod being held? At the Pandrang Jail. What do you want now, Stan? Will you send a message for me, Constable? I'm alone here. Can't leave. I'll make it worth your while. Oh, 
All I want to do is let my friends know where I am. It's no use. Orders are no messages. But who'll know about it? Nothing goes on around here that Indra doesn't know about. You're missing a big chance to make yourself some easy money. Nice work, Rod. Get in there. Where's the car? Over on the road. Field Station 1. Headquarters calling Field Station 1. Come in, Station 1. Field Station 1, Marlowe talking. Did you get my message about the plaque? Johnson and Bellows have gone after it. Stanton knows about it. I just heard he's escaped from jail. That means he's on his way out there now. Johnson and Bellows should have it and be out of there long before he arrives. In that case, fix a booby trap. these wall sections, see if any of them are hollow. Right. Hey, give me a hand with this. And before I could stop him, Dr. Elmore blurted out where the plaque was hidden. We'll have to step on it if we expect to get to the expedition headquarters before Hammond. He hasn't much of a start on us, and he still thinks I'm in jail. What have you got there? A booby trap for Stanton. Stanton? He's on his way here. Johnson, I'll take the plaque to Sir Eric. You rig things here. Right.
That about completes our notes for our next broadcast. We'll emphasize our aim again. One aim, the aim of our founder and not yet realized. But the greatest of all aims for mankind, world peace. One aim, peace. One problem, stop war. A problem, incidentally, made no easier by warmongers like Sir Eric Hazarius. Well, for the present, we'll have to leave that particular problem in the hands of Rod Stanton, since he and Sir Eric are isolated in Pendrang. Calling Field Station 1. Headquarters calling Field Station 1. Come in, Station 1. Field Station 1, Marlowe talking. Did you get my message about the plaque? Johnson and Bellows have gone after it. Stanton knows about it. I just heard he's escaped from jail. That means he's on his way out there now. Johnson and Bellows should have it and be out of there long before he arrives. In that case, fix a booby trap. Find you here. Too bad you didn't arrive sooner. What about the plaque that was in that office? That's what Tal means. Somebody beat us to it. There's a dead man in that wrecked office over there. Whoever was with him got away with the plaque. Look after things here. I'm taking these two back to Zalabar. We'll use your car. Searched Tal and me and found nothing. That's right, but it doesn't prove anything. The portion of the plaque Dr. Elmore had hidden was useless to us without the other half you have. And you mean you were going to bring that portion back to me? What other choice have we, as long as you hold Dr. Elmore a prisoner? You mentioned Sir Eric a moment ago. As the man in back of the theft of the other half of that plaque. That's what I want to investigate. That's all, Hammond. You said before you planned to bring the plaque here if you got hold of it. Does that still stand? Yes, because Dr. Elmore is here. But you must also agree to one condition. You're in no position to make conditions. Just the same, I'll make one. If I'm right and get the plaque from Sir Eric and Dr. Elmore translates it... You want a copy of the translation? Grant it. It should reveal what Sir Eric wants in Pendrang. You're on your own, gentlemen. Tal and I understand. Thank you. But how about Dr. Elmore? He's safer here than any place in Pendrang. Let's call it protective custody. Get the door, Marl. I came to see Sir Eric, but uh, you'll do, Mr. Malvern. Thanks, Hammond. What is it? Uh, it's about the money you paid me. It won't be much of a nest egg when I leave Pendrang. $10,000 is a lot of money to pay for a half a piece of rock we can't even read. Would it be worth another 10 to have the whole thing? My plaque certainly didn't just walk out of here. We know from the guard that nobody came in here since Hammond, Stanton, Talshan, and I left. Remembering Malbon once tried to bribe me? Melvin, an unworthy servant of an unworthy master. Some people, Professor, are like your hieroglyphics. You can never be sure about them. Doc Harris means that all these years, Malvern has been the power and the purpose behind Sir Eric. How about Hammond? Well, you can't tell about him either, but I'd say he won't take a bribe. We'll go into that after I hear Stanton's explanation. When Stanton arrives, bring him here. 
There it is, Greb. Complete. Where did you get it? At the casino. It's been an Indra's family for years. It just dawned on me that this is what you wanted, so I took it. Now we have to get a hold of Dr. Elmore. There isn't a chance of that. But uh, maybe I can help you in another way. How much? About 25,000. How much? Uh, 15 would be about right. Johnson, give me the other envelope in the safe. Let's have it. You might try Tonga. Tonga? The tribal chief can read the ancient sign language of Pendrang. Do you know the way to Tonga's village? And Sir Eric and you have to take charge of that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Melbourne. Plaque plus translation equals the weight of meteorium. The rarest mineral radioactive element in the world. Thanks to Gaffron's inventive genius, meteorium is all we need to be able to sell a practical defense for the atomic bomb. Another thousand on the red. All done. It's number two, black and even. Hello, system. How about a drink? No, thanks. But I might take a job. Game finally break you? Not quite. But you must be paying good wages for little work. What gives you that impression? The way Hammond is tossing money away, he must get it pretty easy. All down. Number 11, black, odd. All down. Sit down. I hate to ask you, Hammond, but I'm a little short. Could you let me have a couple of thousand? Why, well, sure, Doc. No trouble. I think we better finish our business in the alcove behind me. Sorry to have troubled you with an unnecessary visit, Stanton. I thought Indra wanted to see me. Oh, she did, but we found the answer to her question. What's this all about? Just a little misunderstanding. Thanks for dropping by. I wonder what that was all about. I was hoping Indra would have some information about Dad, or the plaque. Mr. Stanton. Doc Harris just killed Hammond. Hammond? For double cross and Indra. He stole a plaque and sold it to Sir Eric. Rod, that means that Sir Eric now has the whole plaque. We'll have to keep a closer watch on your father. Sir Eric can't make another move without him. No, Mr. Stanton. Sir Eric is already moving to Tonga's village. Why there? Tongo knows our ancient language. He can translate the plaque. Why don't you go to the hotel? Explain the setup to Tal Shan. Tell him I'm on the way to the village to warn Tonga before Sir Eric gets there. Wait a minute. What's the trouble, Greg? Beyond here is forbidden territory. To go farther without tribal consent means death. We must wait. Nonsense. I want a translation of that plaque. And I'm not waiting.
No shooting, Marlow. Take us to your village. Why do you come here, strangers, without consent? We speak for our great leader. Sir Eric Hazarius. Who comes now in search of Tonga, the mighty chief. What is so important that you violate our laws to speak to him? Sir Eric needs the wise counsel of the all-knowing Tonga. His wisdom is common knowledge in Pendrang. Speak. This plaque contains mysterious symbols. Our leader brings it. This is a long-lost talisman of the eternal sun. You are the sun messenger. What is your command, sun messenger? The sun messenger desires to know the meaning of the symbols on the talisman. I cannot tell you their meaning without first consulting with the council of the elders. Our leader has need of haste. He desires to stop enemies who threaten you with danger. The council has decided favorably. When the sun has reached its zenith, we will go to the Temple of the Rocks. This man is one of those the great sun messenger warned you about. Sir Eric's your enemy. Silence. The sun messenger will wait for you at the Temple of the Rocks. I shall join you there later. We must leave the trail here. This marker is watched. Can we get around it? Yes. But if Rod came this way, he's in trouble with the tribesmen. The ancient laws of the tribes of Pendrang decree your death. Sir Eric, the man you call a sun messenger, He's your real enemy. You go to Indra and ask her for help. The knife of judgment will silence your lying tongue. Tao Shan, you have chosen to ally yourself with our enemy. My friend is not your enemy. There's no convincing him of that, Tao. You shall watch him and see what fate has in store for you. The sun shall be your executioner. Its rays will start the fires to burn the ropes. If they fail, you are innocent and free to go.
the rumors that have reached us about Sir Eric Hazarius having contact with the heads of several governments on a proposition of world importance are now being thoroughly investigated. If there's any truth in those rumors, Dr. Adams, it means that Sir Eric has managed to outwit Rod Stanton. It means more than that. It's a new threat to the peace of the world. Sir Eric only deals in war. We can't do much for Rod either. Not until winter is over in the Himalayas and Pandrang is no longer isolated. Tonga's village, Harris? Half an hour ago, Indra. I hope they reach there before Tonga translates the plaque for Sir Eric. If they don't, we're licked. I'm afraid it will furnish Malbin and Sir Eric the answer to everything they've come to Pendrang for. Perhaps Stanton reached the village in time to delay things, or even to stop Sir Eric. The plaque Sir Eric has will win tribal respect for him, but Stanton hasn't got it. If he reaches that village, he'll probably walk into real trouble. The knife of judgment will silence your lying tongue. Tao Shan, you have chosen to ally yourself with our enemy. My friend is not your enemy. There's no convincing him of that, Tao. You shall watch him and see what fate has in store for you. The sun shall be your executioner. Its rays will start the fires to burn the ropes. If they fail, you are innocent and free to go. Tonga doesn't put in an appearance soon. We are going back to that village. Be careful of that plot, Marlow. It holds the answer to everything we've planned. Why does Indra interfere? She thinks you are making a mistake, Tonga. That Sir Eric is using you for his own ends. That is for me to decide. Why not talk to Indra before you do anything? I will see Indra later. She wants you to come to the casino now. I said later. Indra has always been your friend. Why not do as she asks? It can do no harm. Will you remain here until I return? He comes with us. Rod, you and Tal have important work to do. Why not let me remain? You realize what it means if they do not return? Yes, but they will return. I don't like this, Marjorie. May I speak with Mr. Stanton and Tal Shan? There's really no danger, Rod. Maybe not, but you never can tell what might happen. Well, that's why I want to stay here. With Dad and Tonga and Zalabar, Sir Eric will have to make his move there. And we'll be right on hand to stop him. Good girl, Marjorie. Don't worry. We'll be back. Miss Elmore will stay. All right, let's get started. Send word of what happened to the Sun Messenger. Put up your guns. Sun Messenger, I bring word from Tonga. Where is he? Indra's police have taken away to Salabar. What about Stanton, Talshan? They have gone too. A translation of the plaque would have led us eventually to Meteorium, the rarest radioactive mineral in the world. And Indra stops us. All we need is Meteorium to make Gaffron's defense against the atomic bomb practical. To say nothing of what some nation would have been willing to pay for it. We should never have left the tribesman's village. Oh, what's done is done. We're completely stopped without Tonga or Dr. Elmore to translate the plaque for us. Let's go back to Zalabar. I have a plan to get one of them, and I don't care which. Tonga, why do you insist upon trusting Sir Eric? He is your enemy. Sir Eric bears the talisman of the eternal sun. He is the sun messenger. But he stole the talisman. The Sun Messenger warned me his enemies would try to discredit him. 
It's useless to argue with you. I'm glad Indra has finally decided to work with us. I must confess, though, I'm surprised to learn that Malborn is really the man we want and not Sir Eric. So was I. But what's all this about Tonga being able to translate the ancient sign language of Pendrang? He can do it. Indra and Rod are going to try to persuade him not to. While they're doing that, Tal is going to take you to a safe place, Dr. Elmore, because if they succeed, Malborn Sir Eric will be after you again. I have no alternative, Tonga, but to hold you until I can prove to you that the man you believe to be the Sun Messenger has tricked you. Prison cannot keep the Sun Messenger from coming to me. The Sun Messenger has come for Tonga, his faithful tribal chieftain. Okay, Melbourne. You too, Sarek. You're asking for it. You, Harris, and some others have refused to take Sir Eric's money. But your guards are not so scrupulous. They obey me now. Johnson, take charge of things here, especially Mr. Duck Harris. been done so easily if Indra's guards weren't in Sir Eric's pay. You're right, system. They're sure covering for Sir Eric now. They won't stay too long, however, under the circumstances. But until they leave, I think I'll keep very quiet. So will I. I'm sorry, Indra, to upset your plans, but you compelled me to take drastic action. You'll be surprised to hear this, Melbourne. But I'm glad to see you as well as Sir Eric out into the open. When the world hears about it, it'll defeat your purpose. Why not get rid of these two once and for all? It would have been a good idea if you'd gotten here before Tal and I. But Tal's on the radio now, telling the United Peace Foundation all about you and Sir Eric. In that case, Marlowe, connecting Sir Eric and me with the death of Ida would, as Mr. Stanton just reminded me, make future international negotiations very difficult. by not killing us has just been clever. You had better be the same. Well? Sir Eric and Melbourne bought our guards as they did Hammond. Johnson killed the Nubian. You are right. There's no chance of stopping Sir Eric and Tonga now. Sir Eric will get Tonga to translate that plaque and get what he and Melbourne have been after ever since they came to Pendrang. At least Sir Eric will have a head start, but not as long a one as he anticipates. I thought you were to go with Sir Eric and the others. What happened? Well, Sir Eric has changed the plan a little, Mr. Malburn. Now that we have our hands on Meteorum, it's going to Sir Eric's head. Is that it? Well, Sir Eric didn't have the heart to do this himself after all the years he's been with you, Malburn. But now that Tonga can do what he wants, he don't need you no more. <laughs> got away with Tonga. That means Marjorie is in danger. Sir Eric and Tonga have gone to Tonga's village. I thought they would, but I'm glad to know for sure. Thanks. Come on, Tal. Uh, can't we drive any closer to your village, Tonga? From here, we must go on foot through the jungle. You might as well tell us the meaning of these symbols now. It will save time later. The eternal sun of Penrang fell from the heavens and brings death to those who gaze on it without understanding. Chosen elders guard the light under the smoking rocks in the cave of the eternal sun. Where is this cave of the eternal sun? Certainly the sun messenger should know. 
I know where the smoking rocks are, Sir Eric, but I had no idea there was a cave in that vicinity. Then let's get going and have a look. Only the chiefs and elders of Pendrang are permitted to visit the cave and look upon the eternal sun. From now on, things are going to change. Andrew was right. You are not the sun messenger. You're We're wasting time with this nonsense. You must not go to the cave. I shall call my people to stop you. You'll call no one. I don't understand how Sir Eric so completely fooled Tonga. It wasn't Sir Eric as much as the plaque. It has a strange power over the tribesmen. Something's gone wrong. We found Tonga in the jungle, shot. He is hurt bad. What happened? Tonga's been shot. I think he's dying. Seize him. Tie him up. If Tonga dies, they die. Do not harm those men. Who shot you, Tonga? Sir Eric? He is not Sun Messenger. Get some water, Marjorie. You know that we're your friends. Too late. I find that out. You told Sir Eric what the symbols mean? He goes to cave of eternal sun. Is he dead? Where is the cave of eternal sun? To get to it, you must go through the smoking rocks. I know where they are. Good. The tribes want to take you back to Zalabar. Come on, Tal. Who are you that dares desecrate the temple of the eternal sun? I am the sun messenger. These strangers? My servants. I came to see the eternal sun, to learn if it is well cared for. It is there. Wait. First you must come with me. These ropes were woven by the elders before me. They look like asbestos. I do not know their secret but nothing could penetrate them. Yet you can see the eternal sun through the material when you dare look at it. came with you dare to look at the eternal sun and prepare. Like all the others who have dared before him, he's gone. Radioactivity. It's Meteorium 245, all right. The most powerful element in the world. This is what we came to Pendrang for. Greb, give me a hand with his chest. Stop! No one can remove the eternal sun from his temple. Give me those rows. Gaffram will need them to handle the element. Gotta stop their getaway with that chest.
I suppose you gentlemen have seen the morning paper. Are you referring to the story about Sir Eric Azarius? Right. Well, unfortunately, Rod Stanton's latest radio report from Pendrang confirms it. You don't mean by that, do you? Sir Eric is again in a position to help cause another war. The greatest danger from warmongers is the fact that they're always underestimated and yet always encourage war. One of the facts this organization has been founded to publicize. But has Rod really failed? Not at all. Indra has finally sided with him and Tal Shan. And in Pendrang, Indra is a force that even Sir Eric must respect. if we made the right move in backing Stan. I'm more convinced of it than ever, now that we know Sir Eric had Malburn killed. That makes Eric all the more dangerous, but is he smart enough to get away with it without Malburn, the real brains of that combination? Sir Eric has already made a mistake killing Tonga. Now the tribesmen will obey me, in spite of the sun messenger plaque that Sir Eric has used to mislead them. That may be Indra, but he got whatever information he wanted. Yes, and with our help, Stanton can get what Sir Eric is after and we can reap the profits. You're a little bit jumpy yourself. Oh, I'm concerned about Stanton. and Tal Shan. Now I'll get back to Zalabar. Place it here, please. This proves to be Meteorium 245, Sir Eric. You will be the wealthiest and certainly one of the most powerful men in the world. You don't have to worry either, Gaffern. We'll make you the scientist who has nullified the most destructive weapon ever invented, the atomic bomb. Mm. Don't open that. Huh? Marlow lifted a little of that chest. There was a flash of light, and Marlow disintegrated. Like that. That is the reason you brought this robe. Whatever the material, it is not damaged by radioactivity. They know nothing about radioactivity, and yet they have a protection better than any developed by science. Have you had any word from Johnson? Oh, not yet, sir. He left immediately after you spoke to me by radio. Have we had any uninvited visitors upstairs? Indra's police. Oh. Johnson says they've been through everything with a fine tooth comb. <laughs> Perhaps we'd better wait in the passage while Gaffin prepares a portion of the meteorium for a test. By all means. But all I'm asking for, officer, is the scientific data that belongs to my father. You can't have it, Miss Elmore. This is a murder case. Nothing leaves here except records of Sir Eric's activities. The archaeological notes are of no value to Indra. They have nothing to do with the murder of Mr. Malvern, and they're priceless to my father. Well, how'd it be if you sat down here and looked them over? Thank you. But I want your word that not one paper will be removed. I promise you that. Very well, Miss. There'll be a man on guard outside. I'll tell him I've given you permission. Thank you.
Next time you hide behind a curtain, Miss Elmore, make certain you don't jiggle it. You're Johnson, aren't you? That's right. Now, I'll ask you something. What are you doing snooping around here? I wasn't snooping. My father's papers... Yeah, maybe. But unfortunately, you've seen too much. You're going below with me. Why are you bringing that girl down here? She was hiding upstairs when I slipped in past the police guards and I didn't see her until after I'd opened the secret panel. Are you sure no one saw you come in upstairs? Yeah, I'm positive. Tie her up. Well, Gaffron, how about it? Uh, it is meteorium, but in such a pure state, it is very dangerous to handle. How dangerous is it, Gaffron? The slightest impulse could start a chain reaction. Explosion? Hiroshima would be nothing compared with it. We'll risk it. The nation that has a defense against the atomic bomb is a nation that can use atomic bombs whenever it wishes to and rule the world. The ability to guarantee that gentleman to be worth a pretty penny. How about your blueprints and notes? Can we depend on them? Any mechanic can follow them and build my detector. Anyone inside, Constable? Well, just Miss Elmore, sir. Miss Elmore? What is she doing in there? She's checking her father's papers. All Sir Eric's records have been removed, sir. Thank you. Everything ready? We can take off on the plane any time you wish, sir. You and Johnson take the chest to the car. Get together anything else you think we should take. I'll send Johnson back to help you. You left anything upstairs you think might help Stanton? No. This time, nothing can help Stanton. Okay, Johnson. You're quite sure, are you, Grave, that the blueprints and notes are all that Gaffin claims them to be? We have his invention plus the meteorium right here. In that case, we'd best leave for the plane at once. Well, aren't we waiting for Johnson? Why? We don't need him. And now what happens to me? Oh, use your head, Grave. We've been through these things before. Bad boys, but this is it. Sorry, Miss Elmore, you too. Oh, am I glad to see you, Rod? And am I glad I was able to drop that scarf without Johnson noticing it? Probably saved your life. What's a massacre about? Sir Eric and Greb are leaving by plane. Sir Eric double-crossed his own men. Must be the same plane he flew into Zalabar. Too late now to try to stop him. What about Tal Shan? Good girl. I can get him by radio. I'll see what I can do to help this man. Tal Shen. I picked up Rod. He wants to speak to you.
Come in, Rod. Over. Melbourne isn't the only one Sir Eric has murdered. All the others are dead or dying, except Greb. Sir Eric is on his way to the plane with Greb. You know where his plane is. Try and stop him. I'll stand by on his wavelength. Over. I'm on my way. Dr. Elmore and Lacano will stand by here. Sir Eric and Greb just took off. Over. Maybe it's not too late at that. There's a man here who's dying, but thinks he has the last say. Listen in. Calling a sea. Calling a sea. Sir Eric, listen. Daphne calling a sea. Acknowledge. Grab reporting for SE. Come in, Gaffin. Like all murderers, Sir Yerick, you made a mistake. You cannot open the chest of Meteorium because you did not take the tribal robe that protects you. I am wearing it. It will be my shroud. I didn't trust you, Sir Yerick. So I put something in the chest of Meteorium. Something that will cause the sensitive, concentrated element to start its deadly chain reaction and so destroy you. Open the chest, Sir Eric, or leave it closed. In either case, Sir Eric, it will destroy you. Talking to Gaffron won't do us any good. You can't open that chest. I'm not going to open it. Then sit down. Garfin didn't put any meat to it. He's just trying to scare us. I'm not taking any chances. This chest has gone overboard. Oh, no, it isn't. Gaffron did put something into that chest. Greb thought so. Sir Eric didn't. But we'll never know. Thirty-two. Red. Eva. System, you've really hit a winning streak. If he keeps this up, he'll break the bank. Maybe. At least my expense account with the Peace Foundation will be greatly reduced. I didn't know System was working with you and Tal Shan. <laughs> it was a well-kept secret. Indra would be pleased to see you and Miss Elmore. Come along, Marjorie. All down. 32, red, Eva. You know, Tal, I really think I've discovered the winning system. Come in. I understand you're leaving Pendrang today. Yes, Miss Elmore and her father are going with me. I want to thank you, Mr. Stanton. You've taught me that there's no corner of the world so independent that it can stand alone. That's something the whole world is learning. Slowly, perhaps, but surely. Tell your father, whenever he wishes to resume his work here, that he'll have my full cooperation. Thank you. He's planning to come back next year. And you? Will you return with him? Or will Mr. Stanton persuade you to stay in America? Well, he hasn't said a word about it to me, but of course, He's been awfully busy. 